Hello everyone, welcome back on Agri Adventures. We are here on the Agri Adventures social platform channels, on the, on the podcast, on YouTube, and also we are on Radio Italia Una Adelaide, there were all the nice followers in Adelaide. They are always looking and looking to know more about local food producers in South Australia. Today, we are not really far away from Adelaide. We are actually in Handorf. Handorf, that is probably 20 minutes away if you are lazy. And then we are gonna speak with Alison, Alison Peck. Is that right, Alison? That's correct, yes. Okay, Alison, I obviously, uh, um, I got in contact with you because the development of uh, the chocolate beer and uh, a whiskey experience, and because we already said a little bit, you have a chocolate business. That's why, that's really interesting. So I couldn't stop my son to get and taste all the possible chocolates that we have over there. Would you like to say something about you to the people that's following us today? Okay. Well, I'm a migrant. I have been in Australia now for just over 14 years. And I'm born in South Africa to a British father and a South African mom. Mm -hmm. So not really South African, but sort of half and half. Um, and... I'm loving Australia. I would never, ever go back. It, it's just the best place, absolutely the best place to live. And Handorf is brilliant. Uh, South Australia is just beautiful. The, the whole culture is just amazing. It, it's really a very, very special place to have settled in. So I have a feeling that you haven't been producing chocolate back in South Africa. So what was the journey? What have you been doing in the past? Like you've been just working chocolate production or whatever? What was? Oh, no, I've had a very, a very varied um, working life. I started out as a secretary many, many years ago for um, a couple of businesses. And then I moved into the legal world and for many years was a what they call a paralegal so doing a lot of the sort of lower you know smaller sort of work that an attorney wouldn't do but they'd have to you know they'd have to sign off on it anyway bit of a funny phrase that one I've done some sheep farming I used to have a farm back in South Africa when I was married um I had 200 head of you a beautiful Damara sheep and yeah it was it was amazing I had this we had this lovely farm on a river in the middle of the um the Rebeck Valley near Cape Town, about an hour out of Cape Town. Um, I've also done a lot of building. So I've had an incredibly varied working life. Absolutely very, very different. It's been interesting. That was uh, definitely was not boring for what I can understand. No, absolutely not boring at all. No, no. So you said changing a lot of um, uh, business. What do you think it was a part of your character they made the, the, you successful on changing so many different type of business? Well, I'm, I'm a very curious person. I like to know how things work. I like to, um, I like to solve problems. Mm. So I'm a practical problem solver. So if I see something that needs solving, I'll work out a way of, getting it right and making it work easily and, and smoothly. So, which is why building was great for me because I could, I could actually envisage something. I could get it on paper, get it to the engineers. They would actually get it engineering sound. And then I could get that into reality. And that was, I, I love doing my building work. Um, unfortunately, when I moved here to go and learn all the building codes was a little bit too hectic. So I thought, no, I'll just, you know, take a bit of a, a break from that. And, I wasn't that young anymore. So, you know, I was thinking, well, I'll take a slightly easier, easier route. Okay, that's, that's interesting. Yes, problem solving is definitely something that is required if you want to change and yes. be successful in those, in successful in all these businesses. Now, what brought you to chocolate? Well, I have a passion for coffee. I've always had a passion for coffee. And I've always had passion for good quality, good tasting food. Mm -hmm. So when we first came to Australia, um, 
we didn't work at all. Whereas my husband, my ex-husband was um, is an evil man. So um, we sat around for three years and I was bored out of my mind. I was going crazy. Anyway, this little business came up for sale. And at that point, it was a chocolate cafe. So, um, you know, it would buy things and have some little chocolates that were manufactured all over, uh, do some odds and ends and, you know, typical cafe food. And I thought, well, it's a short drive from where I was living at the time. Mm -hmm. And I thought that would be ideal because I do love coffee and I love, you know, making things and cooking for people and that sort of thing. So it suited me fine. Anyway, bought the business. It was going all right. And... And then I realized, mm, perhaps I don't want to be married anymore. So, <laughs> so I left my husband and it, it was traumatic, but it was a good thing. And over the years, um, we started, well, I had a couple of employees that were help, you know, that were making chocolate at the time. And um, we started developing our own chocolate and mm -hmm. it just got better and better. And um, for various reasons, uh a while ago uh i actually started making the chocolate myself and i have absolutely loved every minute of it i think also chocolate is really nice because you have this the, 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 the fabric the texture of the chocolate when you have to work with it it's like working yes. with a clay in some way it's it's very therapeutic because you've got this beautiful and and you know when you're making the ganaches it's all slow and it's it's a very and i it's almost, it's a very sensual sort of a medium to work with. As you say, working with clay, it's all very slow and very measured. So it's, it's, calming. it's very meditative. Yes, it, it's very calming. I mean, there are some times when it's quite, you know, you've got to be a little bit quick on things, but a lot, a lot of it is that slow thing. And it's the, it's the beauty of knowing when you've done it correctly yeah. and you turn that mold over and everything comes out and it's beautifully shiny and sparkling it just you know i love sparkly things so <laughs> when they turn out beautifully out of the mold i'm it makes me very very happy very happy perfect and yeah. it's also you can eat it that is the other I can thing eat it. Yeah, that's the best thing i can eat so yeah. when the your chocolate five being established has been when you talk over was the yeah. year that's in uh, beginning of 2010 beginning of 2010 okay and uh, from them to now what are you offering to your customers well from then to now we everything in the shop is produced in-house so okay. except for the croissants <laughs> i don't make croissants but I, I i make everything else so i'll make the um waffles the scones the savory scones the cookies um, I make all of the chocolate. Uh, <laughs> I make all of the hot chocolate drinks. I make everything. <laughs> so it keeps me really, really busy. Yes, definitely really busy. And the people when they're coming over, they're expecting to be, you know, to have coffee, enjoy, have some chocolate. And that is what you want to offer. You offer something else like experiences, things like that. I do a couple of experiences, and we and we have since last year during the COVID um, shutdowns. Uh, Handorf started a um, a particular uh, festival type thingy during September, which is called Handorf Handpicked. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. I think you might have seen that, and yeah. that was really successful. So um, I collaborated with the house restaurant, and I was doing. Did they request that I did experiences? At the uh, at the restaurant um, in one of their conference rooms, and that was fun. So that was truffle making. Mm -hmm. um, we had actually quite a uh, quite a large group for that one. That was good. Mm -hmm. And besides that one, I was also doing small chocolate experiences here in the cafe um, okay. for private groups, and that was also brilliant. So we would do a tasting of all various single origins from around the world. Um, which is a really interesting thing to go through, you know, when you're starting to taste them from about 80% all the way down to the milk uh, percentages. Oh, yes, uh, it is really it is interesting. Really interesting, really, really interesting. interesting. Definitely. So I've had a lot of that. They really enjoyed that. So it looks like we're doing that again this year in September. Mm -hmm. um, but um, obviously I could do, you know, I'm, I'm thinking of doing that as well outside of the September handle, uh, handle hand-picked mm -hmm. festival as well uh, you know in the next while okay 
that is pretty cool. And um, so people is able to find your chocolate over there. Is there yeah. another place where they can find your products? I do supply quite a few places in Adelaide. Okay. Um, Pasadena Foodland has them, okay. uh, as well as mm, the Handel Fruit and Veg Market also stocks them. Okay. And I've got a, a lot, well, quite a few um, gift baskets. Um, have them in their gift baskets. Um, there's a few outlets in Melbourne. Oh, okay. Uh, so I've got um, Frederick's uh, Fine Grocers in Richmond. Yes. And then also in uh, there's a place in Bondi as well that stocks the bars too. Oh, okay. Wow. And considering that now Easter is coming, you're pretty sure they are quite busy, aren't you? Yes, I am pretty busy. As a matter of fact, when I stop talking to you now, I'm going to go back and start doing some more. So, oh, okay, <laughs> okay. So, and if somebody instead coming over or going to visit this shop would like to buy and you know, purchase your your chocolate uh, from uh, online, do you have a website? Yes, I've got a website that's uh, chocolate number five dot com. Oh, okay. And it is an online shop there, so they can purchase from that. Also, I've got um, a cup, well, a particular package on the Qantas uh, wine website too. So, ah, okay. If, if they're Qantas frequent flyers, they can use their frequent uh, flyer miles to, you know, to okay, purchase. Okay, well, it's, it's yeah. always an extra. That, that's yeah. pretty good. And for people that want to follow you, do you have some social platforms that you generally update? Yes, I'm on Instagram, also chocolate number five. Okay. And um, also on Facebook as well. Chocolate. And also on five. Facebook. So all yes. the classic platforms are over there. We yes. can find you in Handoff, which, yes. which actually you can see. I came over a few times with the beautiful, and we can see from the picture as a beautiful old building with big walls, really characteristic. And then we can find you on different shops. We can find you online on the website. We can yes. find you on the different social. So we can find you anywhere, my dear. That's good. That's pretty Just good. Just about everywhere. <laughs> okay, now. Um, okay, and now tell me, what is the outcome that you would like to have from this business? What, like, what's the vision that you have for yourself in the Chocolate 5, Rando? Well, I'm really enjoying what I'm doing. I don't want to get too big because once you get too big, you know, I've had people ask me, open another store. I've had someone come and say, franchise your business. But once I don't have personal control over what's happening with the chocolate, you, you, you lose the quality of it because you can't be in three different stores at once. Mm -hmm. So I can't, I can't be sure that the quality is going to be there or that, you know, things are being done properly. So I'd like to stay as I am in this little beautiful stone cottage of mine and keep on producing, but keep on learning new skills. Um, I've got a couple of new things in the offing for this year. So I'm going to start with a, a few other products, which I'm really quite excited about. Once I get past Easter, it's going to be good now I can start playing and getting new things done. Mm -hmm. I've got some new machinery arriving in June, so I'll be able to produce some white chocolate products, which I'm also very excited about. Okay. Um, because with the, with the amounts that I do, number one, I can't temper by hand. I don't know how to, and I'm not embarrassed about it. It's, it's quite a process. But also when you temper by hand, the quantities you can do are too little. So not when you're turning out the amount of chocolate that I do need to turn out in a day. Um, so with a new machine, I'll be able to have some white chocolates, which is lovely. And it will just make everything I produce that more interesting. Perfect. Lovely. Yes. I really like it. Okay, Alison, thank you very much for being with us with this 15 minutes interview on uh, the different platform. And definitely for the people that's passing by Adelaide, it's not really difficult to get the bus. You can even get the bus to get in a hand off and they can okay. find you. Otherwise, there are plenty of ways to come and taste your little dreams and patient concentrated one truffle chocolate lolly or you want to call it yeah, thanks very much for that it's lovely talking to you thank you thank you i will see you again around yeah. there okay bye see ya see ya <laughs>